Free-to-play MMORPGs are some of the worst quality titles that you will find within the genre, surpassed only by mobile MMORPGs, and there's a reason for that. Money-hungry developers or publishers that ruin the game with extensive pay-to-win, a severe lack of updates that result in an inability to retain players long-term, poor handling overall. Realistically, there are a significant number of reasons that free-to-play MMORPGs are not only bad, but also do bad, but we're not here today to discuss that. On the contrary, we are here to discuss the free titles that have withstood the test of time, that truly excel in a variety of areas. Games that I find myself coming back to, maybe not as frequently as Final Fantasy XIV, but still every year. What I want to do is showcase what I believe to be the best the free-to-play MMO genre has to offer at present, where if you were to show someone that was not interested in MMOs any of these games, it would carry the potential to persuade them otherwise. There are still a number of MMOs that have retained an active, or rather a semblance of an active population that I would love to include here, like Vindictus, like RuneScape or Albion Online or Mabinogi, but these titles are supposed to be the pinnacle of their respective subgenre. And many MMOs, or more specifically, many free MMOs are just garbage, which honestly might come as a shock to some of you. Or you might disagree with that and you're more than welcome to have that opinion. For this list in specific though, I am going to be breaking down every facet of the game, the graphics, the combat, the narrative, the world, the community, the content, the population. If you do not see your favorite game here, then that does not mean that it's necessarily bad, but it does mean that it definitely did not leave as lasting of an impression on me as any of the following. Now I guess let's go ahead and start this by tackling the entire thing alphabetically, which means that first it's going to be Blade and Soul, an MMORPG released in North America and Europe back in 2016. Oh wow, Blade and Soul has only been out for five years at this juncture? I don't know, to me, I feel like it, it, it's it been out for a lot longer than that. This is an MMO that took the MMO scene by storm. It became an overnight hit, with millions of players logging in to play what was arguably one of the most beautiful new action MMOs since Terra's release years prior. To date, this is still one of the better looking Asian MMOs out there, with very few coming close to offering the same depth of customization that this does. The same can be said of the combat. Many people have spent years arguing which MMO between Black Desert Online and Blade and Soul has the best action combat. Black Desert's is definitely more spammy, where Blade and Souls feels more reactive and combo based in my opinion. This is also one of the few games that have a narrative. You can count on one hand how many MMOs actually have a story that can retain your attention. It feels very shonen, but not in a bad way as I love shonen anime. The world is segregated, but as you progress further into the game, the zones become exponentially larger. They're also stunning to look at, but very tedious to explore without a mount. Hey, Blade and Soul, we need mounts. The community is, uh, is admittedly a little bit questionable. I've had a lot of very poor experiences in the game, but there's a large focus on PvP, so naturally it is to be expected, which isn't to say all the community are toxic, just a surprising number of players that I've met personally. Blade and Soul is also one of the few free MMOs that have regularly scheduled content typically coming out quarterly. This might be mostly due to the fact that the Korean incarnation of the game is still highly relevant within its country of origin, however. In terms of population, there are still tens of thousands of active players in North America alone, disregarding European or Asian countries. I dare say this is probably still in the top 10 most populated MMOs and the five most populated free MMOs to this day. This also just so happens to be the very first MMORPG that both Mrs. Six and I played side by side together. Guild Wars 2 was released back in 2012. Yeah, it's actually four years older than Blade and Soul. And coincidentally, both games share NCSoft as a parent company. Graphically, Guild Wars 2 has begun to show its age just a little bit. I've noted this periodically throughout the year. It's still a gorgeous game, there's no debating that. The zones are vibrant, they're stunning, they're full of life. 
There are an endless selection of cosmetic items that allow limitless customization of your character aesthetically. The combat is somewhere this game really excels, although it's very different to the norm. Instead of utilizing a tab target or action combat system, Guild Wars 2 melds the two together to make for an interesting hybrid action combat system, where you have the added benefit of action combat with the slower pace and control of a tab target control scheme. This game allows players to equip more than one weapon type, with each weapon presenting players with a different selection of abilities to use. This allows for you to fulfill more than a single role and provides you more overall utility with additional opportunities for players to more easily adapt to the situation. The narrative in Guild Wars 2 is one of a mere handful of titles in the MMO genre that actually have a worthwhile story. I dare say Guild Wars 2 even makes top three. I'd say this comes in third place after Star Wars The Old Republic and Final Fantasy XIV. The world, much like Blade and Soul, is segregated. This means that you're unable to freely move between areas, that there are loading screens separating each and every zone from one another. Even so, the areas are so large and filled with unique events, story, bosses, and players that you never even realize the loading screens are present. Especially given players are required to spend quite a long time in each zone, as the leveling tends to be a little on the slower side comparatively to other MMOs like World of Warcraft or Black Desert Online. The community in Guild Wars 2 is perhaps the most welcome, most helpful community that I have ever come across. I've never had an issue with anyone outside of PvP, and have repeatedly encountered players that would go out of their way to help me out in the open world. There is a large variety of content to partake of, dungeons, raids, fractals, new events every other month, world bosses, zone elites, crafting, world exploration, the collection of as many outfits as you can possibly find, yes, even with all of the aforementioned features, Fashion Wars is where the bulk of the game is at. Admittedly, I do wish more people did dungeons. I've noted this before, but dungeons are an aspect of MMOs that both Mrs. Dixon and I love, and seeing a lot of players opt out of running them is a little bit disappointing, especially given how unique and how much fun they seemed when Mrs. Dixon and I ran through some of them on stream. In terms of population, with the new End of Dragons expansion on the immediate horizon, literally just two months away, the player base is booming. It's always been a highly popular game, but with their slow update schedules, it left the player base on the decline for an extended period of time. With its unique questing system, its sheer amount of content to consume its great looking world, engaging hybrid combat system, addicting narrative, large world filled with things to explore, unrivaled wholesome community and active player base, there's no denying Guild Wars 2 is one of the best MMORPGs to play right now, free or not. Maple Story is the only anime MMORPG in this list and was released back in 2005. Yes before some of you were even born. This is by far the anime MMORPG that I have come back to more than any other, with the single exception being maybe Soul Worker. This is a very different type of MMO though, in so that the game utilizes a horizontal side-scrolling form of gameplay. You don't have the typical freedom that you'd find in traditional MMOs, but that adds some unique flair to the game. While you move horizontally across an area, and I know that can be a little bit jarring at times, your abilities move on both an X and Y axis, taking you up additional levels, taking you across the entire map. The action combat found within Meeple's story is, and I'm not kidding here, some of the flashiest, most destructive, overwhelming combat that I have come across. Seeing the particle effects from several classes at once on screen is like watching Alexandra Daddario in Baywatch. Interestingly enough, Meeple's story has a very intriguing narrative. There is a main story for players to follow. There's a, a story for every individual class, stories for large scale themed dungeons, and the vast majority of it is satire. I guess if you have no sense of humor, this isn't necessarily going to appeal to you. But I mean, for someone like me, and you guys should know by now the exact kind of person I am, I mean, I couldn't get enough. The world is large, larger than most. However, it is segregated, meaning that there are a lot of of loading screens. Unfortunately, many of the zones also do make use of copy-pasted environments, often being the very same backdrop with just a different colored, more powerful variation of a monster you've already been fighting. But you do get used to it as there are just 
so many zones and so many different monster types to move through and to engage. Honestly, after playing this on and off for over a decade, I can say that I have rarely ever talked to anyone. A few people gave me a bunch of money in game due to <clears throat> uh, streamer privilege. But outside of that, this is the only game where I've never seen much of the community helping or conversing really in any form. Maple's story is a massive grind though, just like Black Desert Online. You grind to progress, you do some class quests, you do some of the theme dungeons, some of the story, and then you grind some more. Thankfully, many people seem to enjoy that formula as the game still manages to cater to tens of thousands of players every single day. This is by far one of the most unique MMOs available to play. Yes, it's published by Naxxon, but it's just so full of charm and polish that you simply cannot ignore it. Star Wars The Old Republic is an MMO sat within the, you guessed it, Star Wars universe, released back in 2011. This was actually Mrs. Stix's main MMO for a while, an MMO that she devoted more time to than any other, and there's a number of reasons for that. On the one hand, this is one of the larger scale MMOs out there. It has the backing of an enormous studio with more funding than everyone you know combined and multiplied by a hundred times. Graphically, it provides players with some gorgeous worlds. However, the character design and the outfits leave a lot to be desired. This is largely an issue with it being a Western MMO though, with Eastern MMOs having a preference for graphics over substance. The combat is tab target, with this being the only tab target MMO in the list. The combat is slow and traditional, which is about what you'd expect from an MMO released a decade ago, but this in no way inhibits your ability to enjoy any of it. I believe The Old Republic has the second best narrative in the entire MMO genre, second only to Final Fantasy XIV, but that's because Final Fantasy XIV caters to the JRPG lover in me. There are so many options, options that alter your alignment, options that have lasting effects on the story, the characters. It's incredible how enthralled you can become in the story of your character, given how rare a competent story can be to find in this genre. The world is massive, spanning a multitude of planets. Yeah, you cannot expect to be grounded on a single planet for the entire game, right? This is a Star Wars game, dude. The community actually seems relatively kind and helpful. I've had players come out and help when I've had issues in the past, but for the most part, they tend to do their own thing. Content is definitely a concern. It gets updated more frequently than 98% of MMOs, but at the same time, it just doesn't have the same schedule that larger, more popular MMOs have. There's also plenty to do, flashpoints, operations, dailies, war zones, arenas, space combat, and just so much more. The population, unfortunately, has not been relatively large in uh, probably a decade. There are tens of thousands of active players playing every month though, with more coming back for the upcoming expansion, but that is still a little ways off after it was delayed. And finally, I've come to realize that almost every title in this list has been an action MMO, with the single exception being The Old Republic. Terra, though, released back in 2012 at roughly the same time as Guild Wars 2. Yeah, both titles actually predated Bleed and Soul, and yes, there has not been a good free MMO release in six years. Terra, interestingly enough, is the MMO that allowed for Mrs. Styx to find me. She was searching for a guide for a dungeon, and I happened to have just what she was looking for. Thus, this game will always hold a very special place in my heart. Graphically, the environments are definitely showing very evident signs of aging. Outfits though, character models, and abilities, not so much. This game is still gorgeous to look at though, and has some incredible looking areas. The combat, and this is just my opinion here, I know a lot of you are about ready to raise your pitchforks and chase me out of my room, but this has the best action combat in the genre. It's fast, it's fluid, it's intuitive, it makes use of combos, ability chains, and it isn't overly spammy like Black Desert can be at times. The world makes use of a semi-open world and some segregated zones. The areas aren't as large and expansive as in Blade and Soul or Guild Wars 2 though, and they're much more linear. The community isn't too bad, a lot of Ellen lovers, a lot of role players. There used to be a lot of toxicity when open world PvP was a thing, but that has more or less disappeared. Honestly, while the game has content to do, not many people partake of what's available. Dungeons, raids, the daily quests, and the odd event here and there. Admittedly, the, the, the game is far from being actively updated, 
which is probably the only gripe I have with it. The population after merging with GameForge's player base has definitely increased, but not by any type of significant margin. Thousands of active players per month. Again, this game is an immense amount of fun. There are so many facets of the game that I enjoy. I just wish people would actively participate in it. I wish I could say that there was any sort of story to follow though. As someone who absolutely loves story in my games, Terra has less story in a game with hundreds of hours of content than this segment about the game has. To say that is disappointing is an understatement. Now, if you take a moment to, to just think about this, then you know what? It, with the exception of Blade and Soul, there really hasn't been a good new free-to-play MMORPG in roughly a decade. Just thinking about that for a minute, actually blows my mind. How poor a state must a market be in that we have had one single worthwhile free MMO release in a decade. Now granted, there are other good free MMOs out there, good in certain areas, excelling at one, maybe two different aspects, but none that I would say fulfill the majority of the requirements that I have to garner a listing here. RuneScape, Vindictus, Mabinogi, Sowork, or Fly FL Beyond Online, I've had fun in so many, but these five MMOs right here are what I believe to be the very best the free MMO genre has to offer, and that's good. The fact that we have a handful of games is more than we can say about the mobile market. Someday soon, I'm gonna make it, yeah, our hard work's gonna be worth it.